Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering the third of the four types of elasticity that we've been talking about so far, and that is the cross price elasticity of demand. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So in front of us, we have a problem that you would see on a uh, practice sheet, maybe a midterm and exam, and it gives you the price change of one good and the related quantity demanded change of the other good. And then it asks you to calculate the cross price elasticity of demand with this information. So let's take a look at this problem. The price of Coca-Cola increases from $1.99 to $2.49 per two liter bottle. This causes demand for Pepsi to increase from 500 to 1000 bottles. Calculate the cross price elasticity of demand. Let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do is write down the formula for cross price elasticity of demand. We have two goods. Those goods I'm going to denote uh, Coca-Cola as C for obvious reasons. And I'm going to denote Pepsi as P just so we can tell them apart. So in this case, I will, I'm looking for the elasticity of P comma C, which is the elasticity of Pepsi comma Coca-Cola. And that is simply equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded of Pepsi divided by the percentage change in price of Coca-Cola. So this is my formula right here. And now I'm simply going to calculate percentage change the same way that we've done the last couple of weeks. So I have percentage change and quantity demanded of Pepsi is simply equal to new minus old over old. So the new value is 1000. Remember this formula, new minus old, which is 500 over old, which is 500. And again, if you don't know what formula I'm talking about, then feel free to watch the previous two videos or the, actually the previous three videos where we go over how to calculate percentage change. So I have new minus old over old. And now obviously the formula says that this needs to be over percentage change and P for Coca-Cola. So I'm going to take new minus old over old. Well, the new price of Coca-Cola is $2.49. The old price is 199 divided by the old price is 199 and we'll see what this equals. 1000 minus 500 is equal to 500 over 500 is equal to one. Let's take a look at the denominator. So we have 249 minus 199, which is equal to 50 cents over 199, which is equal to approximately 0.25. That is 50 cents is approximately one quarter of $2. So now we have this, and obviously we're gonna carry this down. We're gonna write this as an integer. So one over 0 0.25 is four. My elasticity of Pepsi in terms of price of Coke is equal to four. And what does this tell us about the two goods? Well, it's safe to say that four is positive. It's greater than zero. And that tells us that the two goods are substitutes. So remember that if E A comma B is greater than zero, then they are substitutes. The two goods are substitutes. However, if the elasticity of A comma B is less than zero, that is it's negative, then the goods are complements. So again, if you needed a recap on this, feel free to check out the previous video where we delve into this a little bit deeper, but note the, the value, the absolute value of this is pretty high. It's not close to one, four is pretty high for elasticity. And it's worth noting that the larger in absolute value, that the value of a cross price elasticity coefficient is the stronger the relationship between the two goods is. So in this case, the, Coefficient for elasticity is equal to four. But let's say that when we did all these calculations, it was actually equal to 10. Well, 10 is much greater than four. We would say that the goods are stronger substitutes than when the elasticity of demand is only equal to four. 
Now let's suppose that we're looking at complements. So now let's let's imagine that there's two elasticities. Uh, we'll say negative 2.6 versus negative 28.2. Well, in absolute value terms, 28.2 is significantly higher than 2.6. So even though these are both complements, we would say that this is uh, that this elasticity coefficient signifies even stronger complementary uh, relations between these two goods, or that they are closer complements. If you need a reminder on what substitutes versus complementary goods are, we have plenty of videos up on the channel for that. So please feel free to take a look at them if you think that this is a topic that you would like to understand a little bit further. Next week, we're going to be covering the final elasticity and that's the price elasticity of supply. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and we'll make sure we will put them all in a playlist together so that you can find any of the elasticity videos relatively quickly. Well, if you enjoyed the video, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel and comment what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.